Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back uh, to the Let Us Reason series, which is an apologetic series of videos that will talk about a number of issues, uh, whether it deals with uh, Islamic doctrines or uh, biblical doctrines. But in this case, we elected to start by uh, revealing uh, some things about the doctrine of Tawheed as taught at least in the Quran, not as it is taught by our Muslim friends, because we're showing that the Quran so far have yet to say anything that represents what our Muslim friends are trying to share with us concerning Tawheed. And in their mind, Tawheed means simply, but put basically, is that the God they worship, Allah, is one in essence and one in person. So with me here again, Sam Shamoun and Sam, last time, at yes. least in the last <clears throat> couple of videos, we showed that um, that's not the case in terms of the oneness of God because we began to talk about the spirit of Allah right. as a distinct person from Allah who has divine prerogatives like Allah, who has the ability to even create life. That's right. Now today, uh, we are going to begin to show also some characteristics and descriptions, sifat, basically, that are applied to the spirit that are divine. That's right. Attributes. I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the word sifat because if you're dealing with Salafi Muslims, not all Sunni Muslims are Salafi Muslims. The largest Islamic sect is the Sunni sect. It's about 85% of those who profess to be Muslims. Not that those who claim to be Sunni understand Sunni theology. Among Sunni Muslims, you have the sect called the Salafi sect. We call them Salafi or in the West, they're called Wahhabis. According to this branch of Islam, they divide Tawheed. Tawheed, and again, we keep using that term. Tawheed is simply the Arabic term that was coined to denote the oneness of the Islamic God. Tawheed, oneness. According to Salafi theology, Tawheed is divided into three branches. Now, other Sunni Muslims don't divide them into three branches. That's they right. think it's an innovation. But Salafi Muslims say that there are three branches to Islam. There's Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, the oneness of Allah's sovereignty, His Lordship. Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Uh, Uluhiyyah or Ibadah the yeah. oneness of Allah's worship. And then you have Tawheed al-Asma was Sifat. So you know that because you come out of that mindset. That's right. Now, Tawheed al-Asma was Sifat means that Allah possesses certain names and characteristics that cannot be ascribed to a creature. Now, that needs further qualification. This branch of Islam says that certain names and descriptions cannot be attributed to a creature in their definite forms. Now, what does that mean? For example, I can speak of someone possessing Rahma, but I cannot say he is Ar-Rahman. See, now I place the definite article before that now. That's right. Ar-Rahman or Ar-Rahim or Al-Qudus. Anytime <clears throat> these characteristics are, are prefixed with the definite article, the, you cannot attribute it to a creature. Now, if you wonder why that's the case, you're going to have to ask the Salafi Muslim. That's their theology, they came up with it, that's how they define it. I'm simply reporting what they believe. So I can say Rahman to someone, but I can't say Ar Rahman. I cannot put the definite article before that because that is only true of Allah. Now with that said, if the spirit is a creature, to then ascribe some of the very unique names, characteristics of Allah to this creature would be a violation of Tawheed. It would be shirk. And what is shirk? Ascribing yes, right. to Allah a creature in his unique divine qualities, names, worship, and sovereignty. You cannot associate a creature with Allah in these categories of Tawheed. Now, interestingly, <clears throat> Islamic theology teaches that two out of the 99 names of Allah happen to be the Holy One and the Faithful One. Now, if you don't mind, brother, if you can look at chapter 59, verse 23 of the Quran, mm -hmm. you'll see that one of the names of Allah is that he's the Holy One. Right, and we are going to show our friends right now. Um, Fifteen nine twenty three. This particular slide, right here, and they can see it uh, with us right now. That's right. So there you see what is the sum of the names of Allah? Right. It says He is Allah, mm -hmm. than whom there is no other God, the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One. And here is right here. This is the Holy One, the definite article description yes. of Allah Himself. Yeah. Al Qudus. And anyone who needs Arabic, uh, reads Arabic, sees it's the definite article is prefixed to it. al Qudus, And then all their names, the peace, salam, the keeper of faith, etc., etc. So that's one of his names. Another passage is chapter 62, verse 1. And we will go there right now. And, chapter uh, 62, verse 1. 
Amen. Again, you see it? You see it right says, here. all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, glorify Allah, the sovereign Lord, the Holy One, Al-Qudus. Once again, right here, it is Allah, the Holy One. Yeah, so remember what Tawheed Al-Asma Wa Sifat teaches? When you prefix the definite article before the noun or characteristic, it can only be ascribed to Allah. That's right. El Qudus, the, the El Holy you're talking One. About. Right? Lo and behold, what do we find in the Quran? At least on <clears throat> three occasions, the Holy Spirit is called El Qudus. Let's look at it in chapter 2, verse 87. Chapter 2, verse 87, the first occurrence, right? And right. we'll go right here. And you said it's... Uh, chapter 2, verse 87. I said three. Okay, it's actually four times, but still. In chapter 2, verse 87, you're going to see there, it's, it's, he's called the Holy Spirit. I am, uh, uh, while I'm trying to find the verses, uh, go ahead and begin to describe those. Uh, okay. Well, I'll get it. I have it here, but let me just read it for you. And we gave Moses the book. And after him sent succeeding messengers, and we gave Jesus, son of Mary, the clear signs, and confirmed them with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Ruh al-Qudus. Notice he's the spirit that is holy. Al-Qudus. Right? So here, Ruh al-Qudus. So one of the names of the spirit is, he is called the Holy One. The spirit, the Holy One. Now we have it on the screen, and you'll right. see it right there. Correct. All right. So, so now again, remember what Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat teaches. The names of Allah in their definite form cannot be ascribed to a creature. Yet here you have the Holy Spirit called Ruh al Qudus, which is simply the noun form of the adjective Qudus. But he's called al Qudus. Al Qudus, Correct. right? So the definite article. According to Tawheed, this is a violation of the unity of Allah if the Spirit is a creature. Now, this is not the only time he's said to be holy. You also find it in chapter 2, verse 253, which we'll look at. Chapter 2, verse 253. I have it on the screen. And we, we gave Jesus, son of Mary, the clean, clear signs and confirmed him with the Holy Spirit. As everyone can see on the screen, the Once word again. there, holy, is in the definite form. It's al Qudus, right? The adjective form of the noun Qudus. Al Qudus, Al Qudus, it's basically the same word, same meaning. One Correct. is the adjective form, the other is a noun form. So, but it's the same meaning, comes from the same root, it has the same characteristic. He is the Holy One. So this spirit is the Holy One. So that was chapter 2, verse 87, chapter 2, verse 253. It also appears in chapter 5, verse 110. But we're going to skip to chapter 16, verse 102. So it's actually four times on four occasions. The Spirit is said to be the Holy One. So you the want to go Holy. to 16, 102, 102, and we have it on the screen right now. Right. Say, the Holy Spirit has brought down the revelation from thy Lord. Notice again, it's Ruh el Qudus. That's right. The definite article is there, right here. So, four times the Quran calls the Spirit the Holy One. The Holy, not just Holy, in the definite form, which according to Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, cannot be attributed to a creature. So my question to the Muslim would be, if the Spirit is a creature, if he's Jibreel, how could the Quran ascribe one of the unique names of Allah in a, the definite form to this creature without this being a violation of Tawheed? The only option is to say the Spirit is not a creature, but the Spirit is also fully divine, co-equal with Allah in one sense. But then, if that's the case, then that means that Islam does not teach, the Quran does not teach Tawheed. If Tawheed means there's only one person who is God, because Allah and His Spirit, they're distinct. They're not the same person. They're not the same entity. And yet both of them are described as the Holy One, which would be a violation of Tawheed if the Spirit is a creature. Now, what do you do with that? Absolutely. And uh, I hope our Muslim friends can see for themselves that the very Quran that they believe in actually reveals things about the Spirit that are totally different than what's in their mind. And, and that's what we discover, by the way, Sam. I mean, it's uh, you, you deal with Muslims all the time, you know, whether apologists or those who want to be apologists. Nevertheless, uh, they're fixated on emotional arguments Precisely. rather than factual arguments. Yes, yes. And to conclude this part, I just want to affirm another divine title ascribed to, to the Spirit. Allah is called Al-Amin, 
the faithful. That's El Amin. Right. That's one of his names. Now, in chapter 26, verse 193 of the Quran, chapter 26, 193, it refers to the spirit as the faithful spirit. El Ruh El Amin has descended with it. El Ruh El Amin. So the spirit is called El Amin. So two of the 99 names of Allah. Right. <clears throat> El Ruh El Amin, and he's also Ruh El Qudus. The Holy One, the Faithful One, two of the names of Allah are ascribed to the Spirit. According to Islamic theology, the Spirit must be God for Him to be called Al-Ruh Al-Quddus and Al-Ruh Al-Amin. Amen. There's no way around it. So uh, th that's great, brother, and obviously uh, I agree with you. This will require a number of uh, uh, sessions, basically, to be uh, to unpack um, what would be uh, the next topic yes. uh, that we will be sharing with our viewers. God willing, in the next topic, we're going to talk about the proof from the Quran that shows the spirit cannot be a mere created angelic being. He's not an angelic creature because that's what they want us to believe, that he is the angel Gabriel, and Gabriel's supposedly a creature. But we're going to demonstrate from the Quran itself, just using the Quran, the spirit cannot be a mere created angelic being, an angelic creature. Thank you, my brother, and thank you for our viewers, and hopefully you're enjoying these uh, videos. And as always, of course, uh, make sure you send us any of your comments or questions, uh, and even uh, um, you know help us uh, see if there is still some areas that will require some clarifications. Me and Sam will be working together all the time, Lord willing, and we appreciate your prayers and your support. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.